Okay, guys, we're going to talk about the difference between emoluments and why they are not equal to entitlements. Okay. You find that by using mathematics to explain this, um, it's also fundamentally understood by um, the right people when I go in to explain this through various committees and various other means and methods. Now, one example of a, um, a principle of, we talk about the strict scrutiny standard and remember the wavy lines and how we check each advantage, each profit, and each gain. <clears throat> One of those principles that we use is, of course, mathematics, and I'm going to go through one of those through the negative nexus. Now, the negative nexus being written as a multiplication equation is under the pretext of prosecution or prosecutorial discretion, okay? Now, if this were a civil action, okay, it would be negative one plus negative one. So that's kind of the difference between civil versus criminal. Um, negative one plus negative one is obviously negative two. But when you change the sign, you fundamentally alter the principles and practices of that, of, of this mechanism. So when we're talking about why it's a um, uh, an equation based based on multiplication as opposed to addition. That's why we do that, and I'll, I'll I'll expand on that more in a minute. But because this is a lawfully recognized and what's referred to you here, the court referred to things that are deeply rooted in our nation's history. In other words, commonly observed practices, things that haven't changed over the course of time. So. Um, this, of course, is one of them, and the fact that I have basically explained this definitively um, in multiple forms. So one example that I talk about is a piece of evidence, whatever it is, whether it be a falsified document like the one they're using against Trump, this <coughs> dossier that they're trying to claim now is, is all true, but we all know it's, it's bullshit. But it's the negative conduct that the actors are trying to force that down the court's throat, trying to make it appear as a positive, okay? So when we go through and we impeach this particular actor's actions as, in, as they are impeachable, right, we show the court turning that negative into a positive, we show the court the negative, that means the court can now see that the fraud, okay, the fraudulent action of this particular actor is carried over to within the purview or the sight of the court. Remember, justice is blind. So we have to relay this through the quote unquote hearings. So that's one of the reasons why it's so complicated in as far as getting this message through to the court. And consequently, one of the reasons why the quote-unquote traditional practice of law is one of the things that I always avoided. Remember, I didn't do this because I wanted to. I did this going in there kicking and screaming. So now that we know that these things are established fundamental principles commonly recognized throughout our, our history, okay, things that don't change. Now, when they change the meaning of the word, or they've tried to change the meaning of the word emoluments, this is the same way we've talked about with domestic violence or domestic tranquility and domestic violence being violence in the home as opposed to violence on the land. So <clears throat> this is another example of that. They're trying to change the meaning of this by adding another suffix to the end of it called clause. Right? I remember on, in 1991, they added that word in a completely brand new definition in the Black's Law Dictionary. Well, what that does is it has the effect of weaponizing the emoluments clause against anybody that could effectively stand against 
the actors who are trying to change the meaning of the root word. All right, so now let's go about, now let's talk, now that we know, we've established the fundamental principles and the things that are commonly uh, observed and are deeply rooted, you're going to hear that a lot, deeply rooted in our nation's history. So we talk about how the law, um, Justice Kavanaugh said this the best in, in his hearing, how does the law grow up around the current, um, any act of Congress or any statute or any, um, uh, any powers that were transferred from Congress to another entity, okay? When we change the fundamental meaning of the word emoluments to entitlements, okay? This is, <laughs> this is where I always talk about the arrogance of and the fetters of a typical bar association attorney. Now, what this actually does is this creates what's called a mirror effect. Now, again, because remember in the Bruce, in the in the base equation, negative one times negative one, they, they basically they destroy each other, preserve the integrity of the court. Now, when we do this, look at this through a mirror under the principles and practices of entitlements, okay. This was what a mirror image would, of that root equation would look like. And I'm not used to doing this bass backwards, so bear with me. This is what a mirror image, if you were to take the, the negative nexus here on it, and you were to continue to look through the mirror, this is the image that you would see in the mirror. Now, oh, forgot my little negative there. So why is this important? Because the reason it's important is remember those fundamental principles that we read from left to right, right, not right to left. We talk about how we preserve the integrity of the court in the base equation. Now, this is the exactly how they're removing the integrity from the court and why Lady Justice herself is in jeopardy. Remember the conduct, the principles and practices being removed, now they're removed from the court, right? They've changed the fundamental principles, or you know, changed the equation, but the fundamental principle remains. This is one of the reasons why people, they say, I know something is wrong, but I can't put my finger on it. I'm trying to explain how to put your finger on it. So, you know, that's why I said this is all, I, I'm trying to break this down into basic, you know, algebra and calculus as much as I can. As basic, as basic as calculus could be. So now that we can definitively show that the negative sign, either and or both negative signs are removing the integrity from the court, there is no more public trust, right, in the court. That means what? The court is in disrepute. This is what I'm arguing. The thing they don't like about me is, is because I can definitively show it through established principles and practices as a fiduciary, which under mandatory reporting under, what is that, 29 USC 1109, I think is mandatory reporting. So as a fiduciary, I have that fiduciary duty to mandatory to, to, to report to the people who granted the emoluments that are being treated as arrogant entitlements, right? So because I'm going into the committees and I'm, I'm explaining the effects of the cause, right? They said, hey, we need this stuff based on good faith. Here's what they're doing with it, right? What they don't like about me is I can do this better than every one of them put together. And it's just, it's nothing more than experience on my part because I fought this shit throughout my entire career and I'll continue to fight it. So, again, that's why we can definitively show that there's no integrity in these BS processes. So, like, for example, we always, I always say, go back to the Declaration of Independence, right? Where does the Declaration of Independence fall? Okay, well, if we're looking at time as a number line, of course, there's always zero. The Declaration of Independence is zero. You know, we go back through history, negative one, negative two negative three, one, two, three. 
So this is moving forward through history. This is moving backward through history. So again, nature abhors a vacuum, right? You can't, you can't look at one side of zero without looking at the other side of zero. This is the cause. This is the effect. So um, that's why I say to explain this through fundamental principles of mathematics, that's my language. That's, that's who I am. So that's, that's why, where my skill set comes from. So <clears throat> this is one of the reasons why I enjoy this so much. And to go through and say things like, you know, um, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Okay. That's from the declaration itself. First, <laughs> first sentence in the, in the, in paragraph two underneath its preamble. So um, we go down through some of these declared acts of tyranny, and we say that over the course of time, they have managed to reinstitute this stuff. Here's one that <laughs> your Uncle Kirk really hates. For quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit inhabitants of these states right so when you hear about these quote unquote bad actor um you know law, law enforcement officials now granted now they're not all bad actors but there are a few um for cutting off trade with parts of the world well let's see that would have been the obama administration with his um all of these deals where all that <clears throat> excuse me all that money went from us over to them. So, again, the cause, the effect. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our government. Of all of the ones that, of all the declared acts of tyranny that I hold most in contempt is that one. And here's why. If you read through the Declaration of Independence, or you read through the Constitution, this word does not appear anywhere. Uh, democracy. The word democracy does not appear in our founding documents. Now, I want you to go to PragerUniversity.com and watch they did a really good explanation of this, and they show the detrimental effects of democracy and how um, uh, you end up with a mob mentality, which is kind of where we are now in anarchy and all of that happy horse stuff. So I won't waste your time with a bunch of that, only to tell you that this word is not found in our founding documents. And I see comments here, and I'll respond to those later. Um, so, the fact that after 230 years, they're trying to claim, okay, that's the one, that's where that comes from. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our government. That's a declared act of tyranny, okay? <laughs> now, Again, here's the problem with the emoluments clause and how this has grown up around it over the years. Remember, we talked, I just talked about that. When in the 1700s, when these documents were written, there were no such things as um, roads, okay? Roads and bridges. We didn't have a system of electric power, okay? Our waterways, we didn't have a system of centralized plumbing, right, for example, okay? But these are things that we depend on every day as a society. We had to create agencies along the way to manage the roads and bridges, the power grid and the plumbing systems, just for example. So when we talk about of all of the things that have had such a, um, such a large positive effect on society as we've grown up over the years. This one here, creating mechanisms to um, maintain what's called a, a potable water or clean water system is probably one of the most 
one, one of the first ones that we need to protect most, and why? Because number one, we're creating eighty percent of our bodies is water, and we need to preserve and protect that mechanism, that infrastructure. Okay, as far as you know, making sure that if water is safe when you turn on your faucet or blah 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 blah, and also in use of hospitals, people that are sick, that kind of stuff. So. When you talk about who's done more for the health industry throughout the course of history, doctors will tell you it's them. Of course, bullshit. <laughs> Go back to the 1920s and 30s when there was no centralized plumbing system and <laughs> take, a, take a nice deep whiff of what cities and uh, towns smelled like. So that'll kind of give you an idea of, you know, how moving human waste from one point to another and keeping water potable and clean and clear is so important. <clears throat> um, anyway, moving on. The, uh, so now that we've completely, com completely shown the difference from the root equation, negative one times negative one is positive one, that's an accepted practice of mathematics. Again, rooted in law to show the as, as emoluments have grown up over the course of our country. So now to take and change the fundamental principles of that to entitlements, those er that arrogance, right? That set of men. You hear me talk about that all the time. I have a serious problem with this whole concept of sets of men, right? This always leads to corruption, always, right? How we've combated that in the private sector throughout history is all we do is we move people around from location to location and keep that root from, from you know, keep those, keep that corruption from taking root, right? Because we still have to manage those departments through various sets of men. So that's one of the reasons why we keep them honest is we say, well, we're just going to remove the incentive for you to be corrupt. We're just going to move you around, right? It protects them. It protects the company and all of our corporate emoluments as we go through history. Need a new marker, sorry. The <coughs> um, So kind of the long and the short of this is, is we go through um, let's go back to how we express equations. Here's a, here's a good one. There's two ways to express an equation. You can say advantage plus profit divided by gain equals emoluments, right? That is a traditionally expressed equation. Work the equation to get the answer after you work the equation, left to right. Again, some mathematicians, including myself, also recognize the other version of this, which is emoluments is equal to the quantity of advantage plus profit divided by gain. Okay, so to a mathematician, based on root you know, civil redress, remember plus, this plus this is this. Now, when we take into a prosecution or multiplication, the effect is magnified. Here's an example of that. Okay, well, let's see here. I'll just do it this way. My bad. Knocking everything over here. Let's go... <clears throat> Let's take 8 plus 8 equals 16, right? Now, when we change the sign times 8, that's 64. The base factors don't change. When you change the sign, the fundamental principle, the effect is magnified. We went from 16 to 64. See what I'm saying? And, of course, as... These base um, numbers increases, so does 
the effect exponentially. So again, that's why I say, you know, when you talk about how you express yourself mathematically, you need to pay attention to um, the signs, specifically the signs when you're talking about algebra and calculus and higher mathematics, because that can fundamentally alter the outcome of what it was you went in there to do. So because when we go into redress, we're talking about civil, that's always addition, always addition. So for them to, to, for these bar members to try to say now that, well, that's equal to multiplication. No, it isn't. Addition and multiplication are two fundamentally different principles. They are not equal by any stretch of any of the imagination. And this is kind of the difference between when we talk about Sybil and why I write reports. This is word smithing. Right? This takes effort to do this. When you go into the non-equal mechanism of multiplication and prosecutions, well, that's all word salad, right? That's kind of the difference between word smithing and word salad. <clears throat> so when we talk about why they can't even defend against emoluments because of these different deals they've made with each other, throughout the course of history, this is nothing more than, this turns into nothing more than a continuation or pissing contest between the bankers and the lawyers. And of course, again, because I recognize this throughout history, um, another reason they can't stand me and they don't want me there speaking. Well, guess what? You sucked me into this mess. Now you're going to deal with me. So how was I able to protect your mother? Again, it had to become so egregious and so ridiculously outrageous that the only way for me to sever that connection or that contract that they entered into with however the hell they thought they entered into it was to show that the effect, right? Remember, it was supposed to be 8 plus 8 equals 16. Well, the only way for me to, to show that was that they fundamentally altered from what the expectation of 16 was to the actual effect of 64. Again, I can definitively show that through the facts, the evidence, the whole, the whole bit, which is why I always say, look, these guys are so ridiculous, they're a joke. And what's the difference, by the way? So, what, we have, uh, anybody got a calculator? Because I don't feel like doing this in my head. What, 6 from 14 is what? Uh, uh, what, eight, I believe? Yeah, and one from five is, what, four. So you've got a 48 uh, um, numerical difference between 16 and 64. So, I mean, you know, come on, really? And you're going to tell me that that's not an egregious number? The hell it isn't. Any reasonable person can see the difference between 16 and 64, noting the difference is 48, is that's pretty that's pretty big gap. <laughs> so anyway, um, these are the things that I'm explaining as I go through this redress process of how we talk about in the declared acts of tyranny or the declaration of independence as zero on the number line. And um, uh, when I talk about for taking Way our charters abolishing our most valuable laws. You know, Kavanaugh had me as he would have voted right up to the moment where he said the Declaration of Independence is not law. Here's why that is a declared act of tyranny under that particular action. Now, they know that the bar set of men, here we go again, right? violates the emoluments clause because they claim exclusivity over the court. Here's the problem with that. When we go in and we talk about the difference between the theory and the practice, and it's all run by this same set of men, and they say, oh, I can't make those arguments or I risk losing my bar card. So guess what that means? That is not only 
a violation of ineffective assistance of counsel, whether it's by the particular actor who took on the job knowing he couldn't do it, okay, or against the particular association. This is the reason I created E-Clause as a competing entity to definitively show this, right? When I'm done, I'm done. It is what it is. I go back to doing what the hell I did before all this started. This is just us going, hey, we're the people here, stupid. And, uh, you know, again, it's, it, it's, it's had an effect of the more people have taken that report and said, oh, by the way, this is the crap you've done in my case. This is the crap you've done in my case. And they're not all family law. Some of it's medical stuff. Some of it's criminal. Um, believe it or not, I've actually had a couple of attorneys who lost their ability to practice because they did try to make these arguments for their clients and had their tickets pulled. So again, you think it's sleeping with the enemy. No, it's not. We're showing the exact same effect and how they use this to eat their own. So when we talk about where... The UPL comes from, Congress wrote this as a defense mechanism to keep these idiots from doing this crap, right? So, again, how I love that word weaponized, they took that statute, assumed control over it through the court, and said, oh, well, this is anybody who's outside of our process, we're going to charge them with this. Bullshit. You don't even have standing to do that. Why? Because per your own admission, I'm not part of your mechanism. I don't care about your mechanism. Your mechanism is flawed. Why? Because you walk in, and as Uncle Kirk says, you like to admit jurisdiction, and then you take leave, leaving the, um, uh, the, you know, leaving poor Joe Schmuckatelli there to suffer the effects of everything the prosecutor throws at you, right? Again, watching this crap happen over the course of my career, I was like, look, you know, I know what the hell you guys are up to. I don't want any part of it, right? Well, again, when they suck me into this, now it's like, hmm, I'm going to take my manly firmness boot and ram it right up your ass. That's what I'm going to do with it. So... <coughs> That's the reason when we go into Congress under that unauthorized practice statute that they wrote, look, we know why you wrote it, how the bar is using it to defend itself against us has the effect of weaponizing the court. What part of this do you not understand? Guess what they're realizing? Every word that every one of us has spoken is correct. So that's why I tell everybody, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Do what you're good at. You've got people writing legislation for equal shared parenting. Look, that's a fundamental base. You know, that's a God-given right. It comes from the laws of nature. It's got nothing to do with the laws of man. In fact, the, there's a maxim of law that states, when the laws of man fail, the laws of nature must be used. So why the hell do we have to codify something that comes from nature? That's why I said, but the fact that they're there doing it, Okay, again, that's the difference we show. We talk about the difference between the theory and the practice, the cause and the effect. Okay, these are the things that I want you kids to know and understand as you grow up. Two things, nature abhors a vacuum. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so you have to be mindful. Remember, we talk, I've talked about this a lot. When you take an action, know that somewhere, whether it's in the near future or the distant future, there's going to be a reaction. And unfortunately, the longer the, the longer the amount of time goes before you get to the reaction, here's where that fundamental principle comes in again. All right? 8 plus 8 is 16. The longer that you go down the timeline, magnifies, intensifies. Takes you to that 48 base uh, 48 uh, base number difference of difference between 16 and 64. So that's why I said it's it's a matter of 
how the laws have grown up around these base acts. So this is my standing joke, you know, for as many times as the Supreme Court has said, oh, by the way, government, you can't do that. They're sure, they're sure as hell doing a lot of that. Why? Because they feel emboldened or entitled to. There's your answer. And that, <laughs> to, to, to practice that word in that context, is the difference between an entitlement and an emolument. <clears throat> right there. So I hope that kind of gives you guys some of the base um, fundamental understandings of how things are done with mirrors and why this stuff works and, um, you know, I mean, obviously, how you feel about it is going to change over the course of time. I get it. I understand that. Remember, I was the kid in your situation once. And I know I've never told you this story, but for years, this was my reality, right? Getting constantly beat up about go and go with that. Oh, what would you do? What was this? Blah, 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 blah constant just badger the shit out of us about it and i was like you know what you hate my father so what you guys go in the back room and duke it out leave me the hell out of it <clears throat> and that's all that's been my standpoint for 50 years and it's going to continue to be my standpoint so anyway as far as that goes that's why i don't fight with your mother i don't want to fight with your mother I have no desire to do that. I got better things in my life to do than to fight with your mother. So anyway, I enjoy the science. I'm going to beat this mechanism to shreds. And what you guys do after the mess is cleaned up is going to be entirely up to you. And it always has been. It always will be. And that's, that's how I feel about it. That's the end of it. And when you make up your minds, and you will. In your own time when you're ready you'll know and understand exactly not just what I went through but how what happened to you happened to you why what happened to you happened to you that's the difference between you guys and me you now have the benefit of my experience so what you guys do with that and like I said is entirely up to you but one of these days we're going to get together over this. We're going to go and probably over a, over a bar somewhere by, because you kids will be long, probably way old enough by then to uh, go over this and have a good time with it. So anyway, <clears throat> this is the reason that we know, going back to how we started this, monuments are not equal to Entitlements, oops, right? And it all has to do with my most unfavoredest practice in the entire world because everybody wants money. And that's, I wish it were more complicated, but in the end, I'm afraid, kids, it's just that simple. And on that note, I love you guys, and I hope to see you soon. Oops, maybe, possibly could be, there we are.